If we're talking about gold, we need to talk to our next guest. Ron Paul is a former U.S. representative and a highly respected voice on the economy. He's also a pretty big fan of gold. Dr. Paul, thanks so much for joining us again. Nice to be with you. Thank you. Look, let's dig right into gold. It just had its best day in a year. Some people saying that the bottom is in here. What do you think is driving gold right now? Is it the prospect of low rates, taper talk, some of this short covering? Why the sharp rebound? Well, I don't like to pretend I know what, you know, precipitates these short swings up and down. Markets move and they get too high, they come back down, they find all kinds of excuses. I look at it more as a fundamental uh, monetary system. You know, I see gold as money, and when gold goes down, that means the dollar is going up temporarily. But long term, the only thing that I think is really important is the creation of new money and credit. And nobody is arguing the case that uh, we're not doing that. The, the only argument is, is, are we going to create $85 billion of new right. money a month, or is it going to be 75? And the markets won't even tolerate thinking about 75. So long-term fundamental says that they're printing the money, they're doing it like crazy. I've watched this since 1971, and believe me, the printing is going to continue, and the value of the dollar is going to go down, and gold will go up. All right. Well, you're talking about Chairman Ben Bernanke on Thursday. He said something in front of Congress that had some of the gold bugs out there a little confused. I want to play the clip for you. I want to get your reaction on the other okay. side. A lot of people hold gold as an inflation hedge, but the movements of gold prices don't predict inflation very well. Actually, I think psychologically, it, you know, what the gold price going down is not necessarily a, a bad thing from that perspective. It suggests people have some, somewhat more confidence and are less concerned about really bad outcomes. But let me just end by saying that nobody really understands gold prices, and I don't uh, pretend to really understand them either. Dr. Paul, if you were on that committee, how would you have responded to Chairman Bernanke? Uh, I would say, yeah, you're right. It doesn't do a lot of good on the short run from day to day on, on saying what the gold price is telling us. But I would still stick to my argument that uh, gold is a real good long-term identifier on the value of a, of a currency and the value of our dollar. I mean, if you look at the 100 years, it's very easy. $20 up to $1,800, now still $1,300, and we're printing money faster than ever. And uh, there's pretty good evidence right now there's a shortage of physical gold. The physical gold market has always been strong, and that's going to continue. This is going to be sorted out. And uh, after these corrections, sometimes you see an explosion. Even though I'm not into uh, be, be, uh, t as a technician on gold, I, I suspect that could happen. But I think long term you can expect governments not to change. We're going to see more Detroits. Eventually, uh, the government of the United States will be somewhat similar to Detroit because people will give up their confidence in us. They're going to give up confidence in the dollar, and eventually they'll give up confidence on our military. And then you are going to see some real, real changes uh, in this system, which has been built on a fiat dollar for the last 40 years. Dr. Paul, you mentioned uh, the Detroit bankruptcy, and you said that may not be the last one that we're going to see. How do you think this story plays out, not only in Detroit, but also nationally? Well, you know, I'll be surprised if the feds don't come in. They probably won't say they are, but they're already in. I mean, think of all the welfare programs. Every time somebody's unemployed, they're going to get some benefits. The food stamps won't start. So the feds are very much involved. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more cities. And, uh, and they'll, there will be a limit. It might push it over. You know, if 10 cities declare tomorrow and the feds say, well, we can't let this happen. We got them bail them out like we bailed out the banks, you know, five years, four or five years ago. Uh, that could do great damage to the dollar. You know, there's a, there's a limit that the markets will tolerate. I'm surprised that the markets have been rather tolerant. The Chinese have been tolerant. They, they still take our money. They still loan it back to us. But there's an end point, and nobody knows when that will come. But I imagine we're getting closer and closer to it every single day. On a different note, Dr. Paul, before I let you go, you know, we are inching closer to 2016. Just curious, would you like to see your son run for president? <clears throat> Oh, I think that would be very nice, and I think he'd have a very good chance, and I think he's doing very well. So do you think he's going to run? 
I don't know. I, you know, it's it's amazing. Although uh, uh, we're very tight family, we don't. Rand and I don't talk about politics very much. Even when he was running for the Senate and different things, uh, it's not nearly as it's been construed in in, in the in, on the internet that, that there's all this planning going on. But uh, you know, uh, it, it just looks like he's fascinated with it. He's doing a good job. He's getting a lot of attention, and you know, his his views, uh, you know, somewhat similar to mine. So I would have to say that uh, there's reason to encourage him. All right. So sounds like a very hopeful dad there. Dr. Paul, thank you so much.